We have a pandemic that's affected every stretch of the globe. Our daily routines are completely upended and sleep is all about routine. Don't toss and turn. That's a big mistake that people make. They think, you know, oh, I'll get some sleep if I stay in bed, but that's a myth. Without the structure of our lives before the pandemic, sleep is compromised. And then add on top of that all of the woes and the uncertainty across the globe right now, economically, uh, from the standpoint of our health, that creates a perfect storm for sleep difficulties. I must admit, I'm finding the, um, it's the 2 a.m. or the 4 a.m. hard wake up, um, which night after night is so exhausting. Is that, is that as simple as the relatant stresses and they are, they're bubbling up in, in the night? Well, tell me, have you done, had that issue before the pandemic? Is that uh, an issue generally for you or does that start with? I have, yeah, I've had it in times of stress, yes. So. In times of stress, okay. So we broadly categorize sleep difficulties as one of three forms. Generally, people either have a, an issue falling asleep, a racing mind, their heart's beating too quickly, there's too much going on in their mind. So that's the first. The second are waking up at nighttime awakenings, waking up in the middle of the night, uh, 12 o'clock, one o'clock in the morning. And so it's um, a disruption from sleep, often to use the bathroom. So in that case, it it can just be something that's completely normal and nothing to worry about. Get up, use the bathroom, go back to sleep. The only issue with that category is if you can't fall back asleep, then it really becomes an issue. Uh, and then the third form is just waking up too early, getting up at three o'clock or four o'clock in the morning and not being able to fall back asleep. Now, each of those difficulties um, in the short term can just be a little bit of transient insomnia, not really anything to worry about. And again, completely natural and logical in our times. But in the longer term, if they're experienced really every night um, in and out over the course of several weeks, months, then that might be something to talk to your healthcare provider about. The recommendations are different based on the issue. So if you're having trouble falling asleep, and that's also we've seen an, an uptick in, in that difficulty at these uncertain times, uh, you know, thoughts racing through your mind. Uh, we do see a little bit of that uh, due to news consumption close to bedtime on your mobile device or other, otherwise. So of course, if that is an issue for you, you find yourself getting really worked up by news, simply switch off the news. Try not to watch or scroll your Twitter feed close to bedtime. Um, it's just going to be stressful. And often what's being reported on in the later hours of the evening is the unhappy news. <laughs> so some of the morning shows are more prone to uh, tell, you know, feel good stories, uh, whereas it's often the converse at night. So limiting your news consumption and really being diligent about a, a really good bedtime routine. You know, the children in our population are the most well-rested and they do everything right from a sleep standpoint. They, uh, you know, mommy or daddy's voice gets quiet and soft and they have a, you know, a warm cup of milk or tea about, you know, an hour or 45 minutes before bedtime. They take a warm shower and they fall right to sleep. So we as adults would actually do really well thinking about that playbook. Now, the second uh, is where you are, Tim, the difficulties awakening at night. Now, as we talked about, they can be normal. So, um, you know, a lot of us and our ancestors many years ago and in the dead of winter, when you had 12, 13 hours of darkness, people would fall asleep with the sun and then they'd get up in the middle of the night because we just don't need that much sleep. The vast majority of us need seven to eight hours. But when you're provided with a huge window of time for sleep, uh, you don't need it all. So keep in mind that, you know, in those circumstances, our ancestors would get up, they'd keep the lights low, of course, because they didn't have electricity. And they'd maybe talk to their loved one in bed with them, you know, play a, a game or, you know, and then go back to sleep. So um, take them in stride, realize that they can be completely normal, especially at times like this. Um, if you do have that difficulty is doing what you got up to do, if it's the bathroom and then trying to go back to sleep. But if you have trouble getting back to sleep, as soon as that little voice comes on in your head, that's like, oh, you know, not again, it's not happening or, you know, what have you. When that voice kicks in, that's when you leave the bedroom and you get out of bed and you try to keep the lights low, sit in an armchair and do something, you know, soothing and relaxing. To joke, fold socks, <laughs> uh, read a couple of pages in a book, meditate, light yoga poses. Those would all be really good strategies to do if you're having trouble going back to sleep after that awakening. 
So keep that in mind. And it might take time. If this has gone on for many years, uh, you're in just a behavioral rut and you kind of need to practice to get out of that, which is all of those things that we just talked about. Starting a relaxing routine that will soothe you and help you go back to sleep. Don't toss and turn. That's a big mistake that people make. They think, you know, oh, I'll get some sleep if I stay in bed. But that's a myth. Interesting. Pillows. They're a, they're a, they're a big old issue when it comes to sleep. Um, <laughs> what, would, what would your um, professorial opinion be on pillows? On pillows. Mm. How much time do you have, Tim? G- given the insomnia at the moment, quite a lot. I could hear all night. Yeah. <laughs> so pillows and the mattress really are the foundation of our sleep. So, um, Tim, we're honestly, I feel like we're more likely to spend money on a new pair of shoes than invest in a good pillow or a good mattress. So, you know, we really re- recommend investing in these elements that are part and parcel to your good night's sleep. <laughs> We all move at night a fair amount. Even people who swear to us up and down, you know, oh, I sleep like a log. I'm out and then I'm dead to the world. Um, but if we, we take them during sleep, it sounds creepy, but um, if we do, we see that all of us move. Uh, but as we move, we generally come back to one of three positions. All of us spend the majority of our night in either a stomach sleeper position. That's the least common type of sleeper, a stomach sleeper. The next um, is the back sleeper position. The About 30% of the population reports really liking and preferring sleeping on their back. And then the most common is a side sleeper position. So within those three positions, yes, we move, but we spend most of our night. So you really want a pillow that matches that sleeper position. Where do you sleep at night, Tim, would you say? on your back your stomach um, or your stomach. I would say side because if I go on my back I wake myself up with a snore <laughs> perfect so if you're a side sleeper and imagine yourself on your mattress this space between your shoulder and your the, your head is is actually quite large it's you know at least six or eight inches depending on your physiology so a side sleeper is going to need the most voluminous pillow uh, we have a term for that we call fill power you want a high fill power pillow it just means how vo- voluminous again the pillow is and ideally also you want a couple chambers in that pillow so if we're looking at the pillow kind of you know frontal view you, you might want a couple chambers so that on your side, you could have maybe a a chamber that has a little bit more volume that's supporting this area here, and then a little bit of a concave area so your your head can fit there. Uh, So that's one thing to keep in mind for a side sleeper. And then for a back and stomach sleeper, you want something much less thick. So if you're on your back and you imagine, you know, the space between your cervical spine and, you know, and the mattress is, is really all that you want to support. So that could just be a matter of a couple inches or so. And then a stomach sleeper would do well with just the mattress. Because if you're on your your stomach, your head is to the side, and if it's lifted, then it's out of alignment, and that might cause you to wake up with neck pain. Fascinating. 